I'm Kate Sutter, a member of the communications team here at Cincinnati Children's, and I am with Dr. Felicia Skaggs Huang today, who is joining us. Um, she's a member of our infectious diseases team, and we are going to talk coronavirus. We're going to bust some myths that we've heard going around, as well as provide some information for families um, to help you prepare and be ready for what may be coming. Talk to me a little bit about the terms coronavirus and COVID-19 because we're hearing both. Are they the same thing or is there a difference? So coronavirus is a family of viruses that can cause a common cold. However, in cases rarely can cause things like pneumonia and ear infections. Okay. COVID-19 or the novel coronavirus 19 is um, a specific virus that falls under that family that is causing more severe symptoms in certain patient populations. What is happening with the spread of the coronavirus in the United States? The name novel means that we've never seen this sort of coronavirus before, which means that no one has immunity to it, and that's why it's spreading so easily from person to person, especially because a lot of people don't even know they have it. Um, so I expect that the coronavirus or COVID-19 will continue to spread in communities in the United States. What should families be doing? For our families, the best way to protect themselves from COVID-19 is following the precautions you would for any respiratory virus during the cough, cold, and flu season. So hand washing is one way to do it. Wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. Mm -hmm. If soap and water is not available, you can use hand sanitizer. We're recommending an alcohol concentration of 60% or greater. Another way to protect yourself is by using good cough etiquette, meaning that you cough into your elbow instead of into your hand or tissue. Okay. You dispose of the tissue immediately and then wash your hands. Okay. Stay away from sick people. If you are sick, stay away from other people. Um, and those are some of the best ways you can do that. So let's talk about the hand washing for just a second because we have a couple of soaps here and I just want to talk. I know the 20 seconds is really important. What is it about the 20 seconds that, that makes it such a, a big part of hand washing? So the most important components of hand washing is making sure you get all the surfaces of your hands. In that 20 seconds, make sure that you have enough contact time with the soap onto the surface of your skin. So it's not just about the palms of your hands, but also the tops of your hands, between your fingers, and kind of your nails. And then you also mentioned the hand sanitizer. So we have one here. This is the one that just happened to be in my purse today. Um, these are also becoming scarce. Um, do we need to look for anything specific related to hand sanitizer that we might use or when it and also when is a good time to use hand sanitizer so hand sanitizer is my second line option if you don't have soap and water the first thing i would check is the ingredient list we want more than 60 percent or more concentration of alcohol available for that good times to think about hand hygiene are um, after you've touched surface in a public area so like the buttons on an elevator or um, a desk at school, uh, when you've disposed of a tissue or when you've touched your face, okay. those are all good opportunities for hand washing. Or if you just think of it and you realize you haven't washed your hands in a while. And these are things that you should be doing during the cough and cold season, yep. regardless of concerns of COVID-19. So we also have a few like household cleaners um, and just want to talk about that too, because is that something that families should be thinking about now is getting those surfaces in their homes clean? So the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, is recommending frequent cleaning of high touch surfaces. Okay. And there are a couple of distinctions that I wanna make. Cleaning is whenever you remove sort of impurities and dirt from a surface, whereas disinfection is where you use chemicals to help kill germs. Okay. And so both of those components are important when you're cleaning your home during the season. So some of the important products to use are ones that have hydrogen peroxide or alcohol of more than 60% or more, or using dilute bleach. And there are recipes that you can find on the CDC website on um, how to dilute that bleach to make it appropriate for that surface in your home. Sounds good. So like the Lysol wipes or Clorox wipes, um, will those work in this situation? Yes, yes that okay. should be good. And the, uh, the component of that that I want to mention is we know COVID-19 is transmitted from person to person through respiratory droplets. Okay. We haven't seen evidence yet that it can live on surfaces and cause people to get sick, but we're just taking extra precautions until we learn more about the virus. While we're still talk while we're talking about those germs and person to person, masks are a huge topic of conversation. Um, we've heard that you know, people are concerned that they should perhaps be wearing them. Um, how are we feeling about masks? Is it a recommendation or no? Currently, we are not recommending the use of masks in the general public. 
Uh, we find that if you use a mask, number one, it's not effective for a long period. It does have a filter that can protect you from bacteria and viruses that are in respiratory droplets. Okay. However, the humidity from your breath and the air around you sort of saturates that filter and then it's no longer effective. So you'd have to change it pretty frequently. Also, it's not a substitute for washing your hands and using other things that can prevent respiratory infections, like staying away from people that are coughing, using uh, tissues to cough or sneeze, and then throwing that tissue away. So families should not be spending money on masks? No. They are ridiculously expensive, and we don't have evidence that it can necessarily prevent your risk of infection. That being said, if you do have a weak immune system, I think it's important to talk to your doctor because they might have slightly different recommendations from a child who does not have any underlying medical issues.